Greetings and welcome back to edtechmoment.com. I'm your host Tim McKean and today we're going to continue to look at our Google Sites and today we're going to add some content, we're going to add text, pictures, and we're going to embed a video. Let's take a look. So here we are back at our EdTech Moment test site that we've been working on for the last few episodes and today we're going to start adding some additional content. We've got the structure set up and we've got the site designed and the template uh, customized but now we need to add some content for the students and parents to look at. So this page we're going to work on today is going to be like a welcome page. Uh, so I've gone ahead and uh, prepared some things. First thing we want to do is go ahead and click on the button that says edit page. This loads up our editor and now we have all the editing tools like we would have in a word processing program. I've prepared some text here so I'm going to go ahead and bring in the texts. So I can also copy and paste. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this text and bring it right in here. So if you have text from another site you're bringing in, you have text from a worksheet or your syllabus or anything like that, uh, you can simply copy and paste and bring that in. So I'm going to hit save to make that permanent. No changes are permanent until you hit save. Okay, so now you can see I've got my basic text in there. If I want to go ahead and format that, I can again load my editor and I can say, hey, this is a, this is a heading. So instead of being normal text, I can choose a couple of the different fonts here. Uh, but I can also go to format and say, hey, this is going to be a heading level two. And so is topics of study. That's a heading level two. So I'm going back to format. And I'm just using some of my basic uh, formatting styles, expectations and consequences. Good thing to have on your information page there. So I've quickly used some of the built-in styles in the theme to start formatting. Again, if I want to customize those, I can choose different fonts. I can choose different sizes, different colors of fonts here, different colors of highlighting. A lot of the same features that we have inside of Google Docs and any kind of you know, basic word processing features we have there. Again, remember that anything we do is not permanent until we come up and click the Save button. So we want to make sure we do that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a graphic. Okay, again we have to hit the edit button to load the editor and I'm going to come to the insert menu. The insert menu has a lot of different fe uh, features that we're going to start looking at and right now I'm going to click on image. I can upload images here and again I think I mentioned before that with the free version of Google Sites you have 100 megabytes of file storage for your images. Remember that you can also use your public folder in your Dropbox to host your images as well. If your district hosts uh, their own Google Sites, you have Google Apps for your district, uh, then you probably have much, much more storage than that. So you can find out from your district administrator how much storage you have. Or if you poke through the settings on your site, you, you could even find uh, where it's going to show you that. So I can upload an image, or I can have an image that's already on the internet. So you could uh, paste in a web address there. I'm going to go ahead and upload an image real quick. So I'm going to choose a file. I've saved it on my desktop and it's my Cedar Tech logo. This is the logo I have on my homepage for my middle school class and I'll click OK. Alright, so now that picture has come in. It came in right where I put the cursor. Okay, so the insertion point is where that picture is going to come in. And now I have several editing options or formatting options for this graphic itself. I can line it left, right, and center by clicking on these align buttons. I can choose from three different sizes, small, medium, or large, or original. So I guess that's four different sizes. Okay. And the original was somewhere in the middle. I'll, I'll go ahead and keep it like that. These next options here are the ones I use a lot. You can turn wrap on or turn wrap off. And what this does, it allows the text to wrap around the side of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and turn wrap on there. So now that I have uh, my text and my image side by side, and it, that looks a lot more professional. I can also change whether this um, graphic links to something. Right now it just links to the graphic itself. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that link. If I wanted to, to link somewhere else, like I wanted it to go to a print version of the syllabus, or maybe you put an uh, icon there, a PDF icon you want it to download, then you can just hit change and then put in the address of the PDF or the document that you want to download. And that's where that will link to. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that link. I don't want that link going anywhere right now. And then of course, always hit save. The next thing I want to demonstrate for you today is how you can embed a video from another site. I've gone over to SchoolTube, which is one of the places I like to host my videos, also find other videos that I want to use, and I found another teacher that has an introduction video for uh, her MediaTek site. Um, on YouTube uh, and on SchoolTube, 
you can get embed code. And so right down here is embed code that if I take this code and copy this code, I can take that code and implant that video into my site. That's what embed means. So I'm going to actually install that video in my site rather than linking my kids out to SchoolTube. They're going to be able to see that video right on the site without leaving. And I think that's really cool when you can put stuff into your site that way you're controlling the context, you're controlling the environment in which the kids are seeing the video or the worksheet or whatever kind of content you want them to see. If you can put it in your site, that gives it a lot more control and con controls the context, keeps them from getting lost and distracted by other things out on the internet. So I'll go back to the site and I click on the edit button and again I go to insert. Um, now you may notice that there are some video type options in um, in there and we'll talk about those a little bit more later. Uh, YouTube is great except for it's probably blocked at your school which it is at mine. Uh, we'll do another episode about using Google Docs video which I just learned about uh, so we'll save that for another episode. But one of the things that we can do is we can use something called gadgets. So I'll click on the button here that says more gadgets and you can have a fun time kind of exploring the different gadgets that you have uh, in this menu and gadgets are kind of like interactive things that you can install into your site. For example, there's a one that has goldfish, there's some that have quotes from Einstein or daily reminders or word of the day or things like that and once you install it, it's interactive and I'm going to find the gadget that's called the embed gadget and here it is, I just scrolled down a little bit. So I'm going to click on the embed gadget and select it. And what this does, it gives me a box that I can just simply paste in that code that I got from SchoolTube. So I'm going to hit paste and I'm going to hit enter a few times. Um, now one of the things I need to be careful of when I'm pasting in a video is I need to be careful of the size. Because the gadget will give me a window, but I need to make sure that the window is the right size to see the video that I've put inside of it. So if I look closely a little bit at the code here, I see that iframe width equals 500 by 375. So I just need to make sure that I have uh, my display here set to the same. So I'll put uh, 500 width and 375 height. If you want a different size, you can actually customize the um, values in the code there and that might work as well. You have a couple other options, whether you want scroll bars, borders, or titles, and I choose not to have uh, those things most of the time. And then you hit OK. Okay, now I've got this uh, video that has popped up right here on my page. Uh, I can take it and move it around, so if I wanted it somewhere else, I probably should have put my cursor somewhere else to start with. Uh, but we'll leave it right there. I, if I click on it, I see the same formatting to format it and align it left and right. I can le let the text wrap around or not, and that's great. I'll just leave it right there, and then I'll hit save. Notice I don't see any video there yet and a lot of people kind of panic when they see that. They're like, where's my video? It's just a blank box. Uh, that's okay. Until you hit save, it's just going to show as a blank box. But now you can see that you've got that in video right there. Okay, so I've embedded some text. I've em embedded um, a graphic. Again, you can either upload some graphics, use the public folder in your Dropbox, uh, use Flickr, anything that's available to you to put a graphic on the web, you can do that and then just put the address over or you can upload directly to your site if, if you have uh, some storage room there. And then I've used the embed gadget and I've taken a video from SchoolTube and embedded that in my site as well. I hope that helped you get some ideas of the different kinds of content that you can put in your website. There's a lot of neat things. Explore videos, explore some of those gadgets and see what things you can add to your class. Videos, text, anything you can do in a document or a presentation, you can put into your site as well and it makes it accessible beyond the classroom.